Hi everyone and welcome to the tutorial. Today I will be demonstrating how to work an applied I-cord edging. This is a really lovely and neat way to finish off things like shawls, wraps and blankets and as the name suggests it results in what looks like an I-cord travelling around the edge of your work which sort of has the appearance of rolled stock in it. To work this technique you need to have totally finished off your knitting so I have a finished piece of knitting here which has been bound off. I haven't worried about weaving in the ends because that will be hidden under the eye cord and I can do that later. And as I worked my piece of knitting I created a slip stitch edge so to do this the last stitch of every row was slipped without being worked. So you don't have to do this, but as you can see, it's resulted in a very neat edging with very defined stitches. And that's going to make it really easy for me to pick up those stitches to work into my I-cord. So the first thing I'm going to do to work my applied I-cord edging is to do a provisional cast on. You don't have to do this if, for instance, you were working the I-cord just along one edge of your work, but because I'm going to work it all the way around the edge of the square and then I want to join it seamlessly, a provisional cast on is a great way to do that. So I'm going to use the crochet method and I have a more in-depth video about how to do this technique if you'd like a bit more further explanation and a breakdown, but basically I'm just going to crochet a short chain with a little scrap of waist yarn and I'm using the same hook size as the needle that I will be using for my eye cord edging. So that's long enough. I'm only going to be using three stitches for my eye cord so I don't really need this crochet chain to be very long. So I'm just going to tie it off. So the next thing I need to do once I've finished my crochet chain is to start picking up the stitches for the I-cord. Now for this technique I'm using double pointed needles because to work an I-cord you knit across the stitches and then you slide them from one side of your needle to the other to always be working on the right side of your work. So double pointed needles are great for that. You could also use a circular needle, but you need to be wary that you're not using something with too long a cord because then it's going to take forever to, for you to continuously slide your stitches from one end to the other. So I've got my double pointed needle and I've got the yarn that I'm going to use for my eye cord. The lovely thing about this technique is that it's worked after all the knitting is finished. So you can either work your eye cord in the same yarn that you used for your project or something contrasting which can have a really lovely effect. So I've inserted my needle into one of the bumps on the reverse side of my crochet chain. Take my yarn and leave just a normal length sort of tail which is on that side. Wrap it around my needle and draw the yarn through that bump in the crochet chain so I've picked up one stitch. We then go to the second bump next to the first one, wrap the yarn around and draw it through, that's two stitches. And then the third bump, wrap the yarn around and draw it through, so we've picked up three stitches. The next thing I'm going to do is join my stitches to my knitting. So the great thing about the applied eye cord is that you actually work it onto your knitting. You don't make it and then have to sew it on later, which can save a bit of time. So I've worked this in garter stitch, so I don't really have a right side or wrong side of my work. But if I did, I want to make sure that I would have the wrong side of my work facing me. So I'm going to pick up and knit one stitch anywhere along the border of my square. It doesn't matter where. So what I'm going to do is the needle that has these three stitches attached to it is the one that I'm going to poke through one of these lovely slip stitches along the edge. And just like when you were picking up stitches in the crochet chain, you're just going to wrap the yarn around the needle and draw it through, which has picked up a stitch. So now I have three provisionally cast on stitches and one stitch that's attached to my knitting. So we're ready now to start knitting our I-cord and an I-cord is sort of like 
knitting in the round while knitting flat. So what I mean by that is that we're always going to be working the right side of our work and we're going to be creating something that's sort of like a tube but we do that just by knitting flat. So to achieve that what you need to do is slide your stitches from one end of your needle to the other and then we're going to knit across them. So even though our working yarn is attached to this stitch on the far end we're going to pull it across our work relatively tightly so that we don't end up with a gappy sort of float at the back of our eye cord. And then just as you would normally, I'm going to start knitting across these stitches. So I'm going to knit one stitch and then a second stitch. So I now have two work stitches on my right hand needle and then I have two stitches left on my left hand needle. I'm going to knit these stitches together through the back loops. So I take my right hand needle and I insert it through both of these stitches but through the back loops of the stitches so you can see what's going on there. And then I knit these stitches together. So wrap my yarn around and draw the yarn through both of those stitches. And then I'm going to take my right hand needle, once again insert it into the next slip stitch along the edge, wrap the yarn around and draw the yarn through. So through that I've started working my eye cord. I've knit my last two stitches together so that I maintain the same number of stitches on my needle at all times. And then I've picked up another stitch so that as the eye cord is being created, it's always connected to my piece of knitting. The last thing I do is once again slide those stitches from one end of your double point of needle to the other. And then we're ready to repeat. Knit two, so pull the yarn across the back of your stitches again. Knit one, knit two. Knit the two next two stitches together through the back loops. So insert through the back loops, knit them together. And then pick up and knit the next slip stitch along the edge of your knitting. So I always have four stitches on my needle. Three of them are the eye cord and one is what attaches these two bits of knitting together. Now if you are working an eye cord around a square or rectangle or another shape that has corners in it, to ease the eye cord around the corner without making your fabric buckle or flare, I like to work three eye cord stitches into the same stitch. So here I'm at my corner and I've picked up and knit one stitch and what I'm going to do is pick up into the same stitch an additional two times. So just as we were doing, knit two and then knit two together through the back loop. And then you can see which stitch has been attached. You can see the yellow yarn here is going through that stitch. And I'm going to insert my needle into that same stitch again for a second time. And once again, work the eye cord. And then we're going to do that a third and final time, same stitch again, and knit the eye cord. And that's just going to make a really nice neat corner. Now on this square I have two edges which have slip stitches and then I also have my bind off and cast on edges. To pick up and knit stitches along these edges, it's the exact same thing. You just find a stitch, so this would be my next one here, and make sure I go through two strands. So this isn't a slip stitch edge, you can tell, but I'm going to treat it in the same way. So just pick up and knit a stitch there like so. My eye cord has traveled around the corner. And we're just going to slowly rotate this square around until we've worked all sides in this eye cord. 
Okay, so that's my I-cord edging all done. I can't pick up any more stitches along the edge because I'm back to where I started. And it did take a little while to work this I-cord, but the effect is really lovely, so I think it's worth the time we spend on it. The only thing left to do now would be to undo this crochet chain, return the three provisional cast-on stitches to my spare double-pointed needle, and then I would hold those two sets of stitches together and graph them together neatly. You could also just sew them together if you didn't use this provisional cast on, but I think it looks really neat when their kitchen is stitched. So if you watch my provisional cast on video, I show you how to undo this crochet chain. And I also have a video on how to do kitchen a stitch. So that will take you through how to join these two sets of stitches together. So that's the applied I-cord edging. This is the wrong side of my work that was facing me as I worked my I-cord. And if I flip it over, you'll see it's even lovelier and neater on the right side of our work. So that's why we worked it on the wrong side. And that's all done. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or comments, do leave them below.